Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to run a uh, uh, forecast based on a linear regression, a simple linear regression. And the idea is basically that we have data with uh, some kind of a growth component in it and uh, it's uh, moving upwards. So we are going to estimate an intercept and a slope that will then be used to create the forecast. We're only going to use the first year of data, which is the first 12 months that we have here, to create um, our uh, regression uh, coefficients to estimate the intercept and the slope. And then we're going to apply the regression to, uh, to the entire set of data. Now let's get started. So first of all, we have to calculate our intercept and our slope. There are several ways to do uh, to run a regression in, in Excel, but the easiest one for this case is to just use the intercept and the slope function. So to use the intercept function, we type in intercept, and then we open the parentheses, and then it asks us for two things, our known y's and our known x's. Our known y's are basically the uh, uh, output that we want the forecast to achieve. So in this case, that would be our demand. So we are going to highlight the first 12 months of demand. And then our known x's are going to tell us where in the time series we are. So for that, I've created this column here that's called period. I'm going to hi highlight there again the first 12 periods. I'm going to close the parentheses, and then it will give us a intercept of 80.667. Now, to calculate the slope, it works very similarly. We're going to type in slope, open parentheses, and then the function uh, uses the same logic. We highlight our first 12 months of demand, and then we highlight our first 12 periods that are numbered sequentially. We close our parentheses, hit enter, and here we go. Our slope is 7.577. All right, so now in order to uh, create the forecast, we have to uh, basically type in the reg regression equation into uh, our forecast column. So, before we type in the actual regression equation, we want to make sure that we don't forecast half units. So we're going to use the round function. And we're going to say round. And then the general way a regression is uh, set up is the forecast equals the intercept plus the slope times how many periods we are in. So, we are going to say intercept. We want to make sure that when we copy this formula down, it stays put. So I'm going to hit F4. It's going to place two dollar signs in there. And that will ensure that when we copy the formula, it will stay put. Plus slope times the period number. Now again, for slope, we have to go back and also hit the 4 and make sure that it stays put when we um, copy the formula down. And then I am just finishing up this formula here by making sure that the round function is complete. We close the parentheses and there we go. That's our regression equation. Now all I need to do is I need to copy this down and here we go we see on our graph we just created a straight line forecast for two years worth of data it fits a little better for the first year than for the second year because for some reason the slope changes slightly in the second year however that is basically uh, how a uh, simple linear regression would work okay now just to ensure that we uh, um, created a good forecast. I'm going to leave out the first period for because uh, in order to, cal to calculate the U statistic, we uh, we need uh, one period before. So I'm going to just consistently calculate all my uh, forecast accuracy measures for, uh, starting in period two. If you really wanted to, you could even start in year two because that's when you when it really matters. But we're we're going to start in period two in this case. So. Our forecast error is basically demand minus forecast. 
Our absolute error is the absolute value of that forecast error. Our percentage error, and we're going to do the uh, absolute percentage error in this case, equals our absolute error divided by demand. Our squared error is basically our error term that we raised to the second power. And then finally, the denominator for our U statistic, which the, the U statistic basically compares how good this forecast is to the naive forecast. So we, the, the numerator of that is the squared error. We just need the denominator, which would basically be the squared error we would have obtained if we would have used uh, the naive method. So that is, we have to open up parentheses, demand of the current period minus demand one period earlier, because that's what the naive method would use as a forecast, and we raise that to the second power. Okay, so now all we need to do is we need to copy all of these formulas down here, and I set up uh, the error, the absolute error, the percentage error, and the squared error columns with conditional for uh, formatting, so we can see a little bit um, where most of the errors occur, and it uh, just visually makes it a lot easier to, to see how good our forecast is. Okay. Now to, to calculate overall accuracy measures, we have to ca uh, calculate the mean error, which basically means we take the average of column E, which is we take the average of our errors. Then we have to calculate our mean absolute error, which is basically the average of that column here, which is column F. Our mean absolute percent error, again the average of column G. Our MSC is basically the average of column H, which is all our squared errors. And then finding the U statistic is the square root of the sum of the squared errors divided by the sum of uh, the squared errors we would have obtained with, uh, if we would have performed the U statistic. We say S Q R T open parentheses, and then we want to sum. Be careful to actually sum them and not average, and like for the other ones, sum the squared errors and then divide them that by the sum of the squared error for the U statistic. And we close two parentheses, and there we go. So this was a forecast using simple linear regression in Excel.